Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Coinly, the cryptocurrency tax software, in order to track your crypto gains and or losses during the tax year. Now, I am not a certified tax accountant or consultant, so I would advise you to get with your tax preparer or tax accountant for any specific questions you may have about paying your taxes. But I can give you a brief overview of how crypto taxes work. The first thing you need to remember is that if you are using a wallet, such as MetaMask, Rabi, or a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor, you are not getting taxed for moving your cryptocurrency back and forth between your wallet and your exchange. So if you're buying crypto and then storing it in your wallet, you do not get taxed when you transfer your cryptocurrency. However, when you trade your cryptocurrency, if you swap it for one crypto or another, or you buy and sell crypto with dollars or any other currency, that is considered a taxable transaction. You have to keep track of how much you paid for that crypto and how much you made on that trade, whether it was a loss or a gain. So it's very important to document everything you do with your cryptocurrency. You don't want to get a transfer to your wallet counted as a sale. So that's really the main thing you need to be concerned about when calculating your capital gains or losses for all of your crypto trades. When you use a software like Coinly, it's very important to document everything that you've done with your cryptocurrency. You're going to need to put in your wallet addresses into this software, and then you're also going to need to put a transaction history from your trading exchanges when you set up this software. That way, everything can be tracked and traced. Now, a lot of people are concerned about privacy when they use services like Coinly, uh, to calculate their crypto gains and losses. Most people say things like, isn't crypto supposed to be private? Well, it's private if you're just buying. If all you're doing is buying and storing cryptocurrency, then you haven't made any gains or losses yet until you sell. So if you want to keep that private, that's completely up to you. The problem comes when you buy or sell crypto and you have gains or losses. If you're trying to hide your gains from the IRS, you can open yourself up to a whole host of problems. So, of course, you need to carefully account for any crypto gains or losses to the IRS if you're going to be doing your taxes. If you're going to be hiding your crypto gains from the IRS, then uh, you're basically on your own there. So we've established that we don't want to keep our crypto wallets and our crypto transactions private or hidden from the IRS. Now, what about things like Coinly? Well, uh, if you don't want to use a service like Coinly, then you are responsible for tracking and tracing every crypto trade and transfer on your own. And this can be a daunting task. So think of Coinly as a service like a tax preparer, like H&R Block, or a tax accountant, or your stockbroker, if you trade stocks and bonds, or your attorney. All of these third-party services process your financial information, and we all trust them because they are legally bound not to disclose that information. The same goes with Coinly. They are not going to be giving out your information to anyone that asks. You have a reasonable expectation of privacy when you use services like Coinly, and you might want to read their terms of service and customer agreements if you're unsure about any of this. I'm going to go through the setup of the account. I'll show you how to get your account set up. And then I'm going to show you how to start entering your wallets and exchange histories so that you can be confident 
that you're accurately reporting all of your crypto gains and losses on your taxes. So let's jump in. All right, so getting your account set up is a breeze, just like signing up for Twitter or Facebook. Uh, just hit the sign up here. Now you can sign in using your Google account if you want to, or you can uh, just use your email to create a separate login. So you'll choose a password and create an account. All right, now in my case, it's just individual. And then uh, you'll choose your country and currency. And before I dive in too far, uh, there are a lot of scammers out there and they will call you claiming to be from crypto tax software companies like Coinly or Cointracker, and they'll convince you that you have to pay taxes and they'll uh, ask you to transfer your crypto to them um, in order to do your taxes. I've gotten emails and uh, comments from a lot of people who have been scammed by these services. And generally they ask me things like, how do I get my crypto out of these services? And they've obviously been scammed into transferring their crypto to them. So just keep in mind that you are not going to be transferring any crypto into the Coinly service. You are just giving them your wallet addresses so that they can track and trace your transactions. Also, you are not giving them any private information that will allow them to access your wallet or your exchange accounts. All of the information that you will be giving them are basically just transaction histories. Wallet addresses are public and are on the blockchain. So you're not giving them any information that will allow them to get access or steal your crypto. All right, so uh, let's hit continue here and we're ready to roll. So the first thing that I'll do is I want to uh, set up a Bitcoin account. Uh, that's the most common cryptocurrency, uh, but there's a little idiosyncrasy with Bitcoin wallet that I would like to address first. So we can use these qualifiers here. We'll go over to wallets. Uh, now we could tell them that I have a ledger wallet, but I would like to uh, just show you how uh, Bitcoin works, right? Uh, and this is kind of a generic Bitcoin wallet. Um, the important thing about Bitcoin is that you need to use your XPUB address. Um, the reason being that Bitcoin wallets generate new receiving addresses every time you make a transfer. Um, this increases your privacy on the Bitcoin blockchain so that giving out your Bitcoin address doesn't expose your entire history. Uh, but that can be a problem when you're dealing with uh, tax software because the tax software wants to see the entire Bitcoin wallet, all of the transactions. So we need that XPUB address. So I'll show you how to get it using Ledger Live. So I'll go into uh, one of my Bitcoin accounts and what I need is the XPUB address. So just doing a receive isn't going to give enough information. This would basically be an empty uh, transaction history because I've never sent to this uh, receiving address before. So in order to get the XPUB, we'll go up here to edit account and then uh, we'll just pull down advanced here and there's the XPUB address, right? Um, we want to highlight that entire address. You can actually just kind of double click it. I know it's a little hard to see that it's highlighted, but we don't want these quotation marks, right? We just want this really long address. And we can copy that into our clipboard. We'll go back over here and we'll paste that in. All right, that's our XPUB address. And then we'll hit import. Now we can also continue on here. Uh, we're already doing Bitcoin. So uh, let me grab the other one because we want to make sure we get all our accounts. This other Bitcoin account, I'll go to advanced. I'll double click this, whoops. Make sure that I've got everything in between the uh, quotation marks there. Copy it into my clipboard and then drop this in here. All right, we'll hit import there as well. 
Uh, notice they also had a video that you could watch on how to do this. Now, if we wanted to use Ledger Live, let's see what they do with that. Let's see what happens when we use Auto Sync. All right, yeah, I mean, they're basically just telling us to grab the address of all the different chains that we're using. Uh, so we could do these crypto by crypto as well, which might be easier because you're going to have to do them one by one anyway. It just won't import everything from uh, a ledger live. So uh, let's do the XRP here. Now, when we get a receiving address for XRP, that's our wallet address. That will always be the same. So that's going to have a total list of all the transactions. We'll just copy that into our clipboard. We'll go back over here and then we'll go to blockchains and hit XRP. All right. And then paste in that public address and hit import. All right. And I'll just go down the line here. We can go to Stellar hit receive, get the address, go back here, uh, XLM is Stellar, and then uh, I'll paste in the address. All right, we'll go to over, over to the next one here in my list of accounts. Uh, I'll just uh, do this Solana account, get the address, as you can see, I can just grab the addresses without having to connect the device. Uh, it's best practice to do the hardware check, uh, but it's not strictly necessary. It'll still get you to this point here. All right, uh, let's go back. And we want Solana. We can see it right here. We'll paste in that address. And then we'll hit import. All right, uh, and then after you've done your wallets, you can even do exchanges. So uh, let's, I'll show you Coinbase here. Uh, we can do auto sync from Coinbase. It's pretty easy. Uh, we're basically just going to sign into our Coinbase account. And like I said, we're signing into our Coinbase so that they can export our transaction history. This does not give them access to our Coinbase account. It's just a way of them being able to uh, connect to your account for your transaction data. So we'll hit continue to Coinbase. We'll go ahead and get ourselves signed in. I have a pass key. All right, so Coinbase recognizes that a third party service is asking for access. So as you can see, what we're granting here is account details, transaction and payment methods. And, current, and crypto. We're not giving it uh, access to trade. Oh, we'll choose allow access. So as you can see, Coinly is syncing up to my Coinbase account. All right, so it could take a little while for your Coinbase to sync up. I know mine has a lot of transactions back and forth. Um, so while I'm waiting, I can go ahead and uh, go back up here and add additional wallets and exchanges. Uh, but let's say you're using something like MetaMask. If you're using a wallet like MetaMask, um, your auto sync would just ask you to paste in the address of your MetaMask wallet. So in MetaMask, that is this uh, main address right up here. Okay, and then there's five linked accounts. Notice it detects the alternate chains that I've used in that wallet on that address, pretty nice, right? I've done Avalanche, Optimism, Matic, and Base, and Blast. We'll hit Import. All right, so you can see that it's uh, linked up my Coinbase, uh, got all the, the, and there's quite a few transactions in there. I've got my MetaMask in there with my alternate chains. Pretty good, it's still updating. You might wanna give it a while to update. All right, and if we go back to the uh, main page here, you'll get an overview of your holdings, your current holdings, and your unrealized gains, and uh, they have an estimated cost basis here. Now, I want to keep this simple uh, for people that are just getting into this. Uh, 
there there may be mismatches between your wallets and your exchanges. Uh, like for example, I have one here because I didn't buy this XLM from my Coinbase account, uh, but I haven't added all of my exchanges yet. So you wanna make sure to get everything synced up. But as far as someone that just uses Coinbase and has a few wallets, uh, this is a pretty easy setup, right? And once you've got everything synced up, you can review your transactions to, for accuracy. And then uh, the last step would be downloading your tax report. All right, and they'll give you any uh, alerts if you need to review. As I mentioned, there was a mismatch between Coinbase and my XLM wallet. Pick your report type. Uh, you can interface with TurboTax if you want to. Or you can just download the IRS Form 8949, which is the capital gains form. Uh, you would want to get with your accountant on this. Uh, like I mentioned, if you're using TurboTax, you can uh, ask them as well, which uh, works best for them. But, but the main thing to remember is that the only way that crypto trades and transfers impact your taxes are the capital gains. So the main thing is the capital gains report that you need to fill out for the IRS. All of the other stuff would be separate. So your, your normal income and your 1040 form, all of that stuff uh, you would do as normal. Coinly does not prepare your entire tax form for you. They just give you the capital gains and losses. And then you coordinate that with your uh, tax software, your tax preparer, or your tax attorney. Of course, when you hit download report, you're going to need to sign up. Uh, and then we'll go over to view plans. They'll give you an estimate based on the activity that you've uh, connected to their service. Right. For me, I have uh, 3,000 plus transactions, so they're recommending the $200 plan. But if you're uh, new to crypto and you don't have that many transactions, or if you're only using Coinbase, uh, your taxes will be pretty simple. Your capital gains will be pretty straightforward, and uh, you can sign up for one of their newbie plans. So that's it. That's pre it's pretty easy to get signed up, connect your wallets, connect your exchanges, and generate tax forms using Coinly. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.